Hi guys, this is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent stamp map demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today I have two projects for you. I made these for the One Stamp at a Time blog hop. We do a blog hop the second Thursday every month. And this month our theme was BFFs, a card that we could send to our BFFs. So this is the one I came up with. Uh, this is the card. And then I will also be making this little gift pouch too. This one is made with the uh, pretty pillow box dies. So I will make this here uh, later on in the video, but this is the first thing that we're going to make. And if you'd like to stamp along with me, just look down at the blog post link below and click on that blog post link and you'll find all the supplies and the dimensions you need to make these two projects. And also, you can join the blog hub while you're there too. Just scroll down and you'll see the list of all the other very talented demonstrators in this blog hub so you can check out what they made too. Okay, let's get started. Okay, as always, I want to show you what I used first. This is the True Beauty uh, bundle. It's in the annual catalog, and it does come with all of these dies. And if you purchase this together as a bundle, you save 10% versus buying the die set and the stamp set separately. It's a beautiful set. I'm also going to be using the Awash and Beauty uh, Designer Series paper that uh, goes along with it. All of these are part of the Awash and Beauty uh, suite that's in the annual catalog. So what I will be using for the stamps, I'm going to be using the rose, this flower here, this little flower here, the double leaf one here, and you are a true friend. And then with the dies, I'm not going to use this one this time. I did use this in another card I made, and I will put a link to that video up in the top right corner and also down in the video description. And then I've also got uh, these dies. I'm going to be using this one for the rose. Uh, I'll be using the double leaf one here, and I'm going to use this one, and those are all the dies that I'll be using. I'm also using another die set. This is Deckled Rectangle Dies, and these are also in the annual catalog. love these. I love how it does a little, uh, oh, distressed looking edging around the rectangle. And I'm going to use the number five rectangle die, and I always count with the smallest one being one. So one, two, three, four, five. That would be this one right here. And last but not least, I'm going to be using the Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder, also from the Annual Catalog. So all of these things from the Annual Catalog, lately I've been doing things with the July to December Mini, but the Annual Catalog still has so many wonderful things in it. So don't forget about that Annual Catalog. Okay, first off, we'll get some stamping done. Now I went ahead and die cut this out uh, before the video because it's uh, in this case, I want to die cut it and then stamp on it. Normally, I'd do the other way, but we're going to cover this up with uh, flowers. And if I used the bigger piece, I wouldn't have known. It would have been hard to get it to look right. So it's just a lot easier to die cut that first. And I'll be showing you how to use the die cutting machine here in a minute. So don't worry, you'll know how to do this. Um, I'm going to grab my Mary Merlot. And all the colors I'm using come from the paper. And let's see, we're going to do Mary Merlot. Polished Pink, uh, let's see here, Calypso Coral, and uh, Mossy Meadow. So I'll just go ahead and get all of these out. Let's start with this flower right here. This is going to be my Mary Merlot. The rose one is going to be my Polished Pink. The small one is going to be my Calypso Coral. And then I'm going to use uh, Mossy Meadow for the leaves. So that's all everything we're going to be stamping on here. So I'm going to start off with my Mary Merlot. Let's put a flower right about here. Now I could go ahead and try to find another place for it. But since these flowers are so big, this is just the way I do it. I think it's a little easier to just stamp each flower and each leaf where you want it first and go from there. Because if you're doing small ones, I would just do a bunch of them in triangles and then fill in. But I didn't want to do that with this one. Since these flowers are so big, I don't want them overlapping this time. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. Let's go ahead and put a rose about right here. And I'm going to fill in. Let's put a little clips of coral one there. I'm going to put a leaf right here on this one. Let's see, what else do we want to do? Let's do another burgundy one down here. But I left a little space here because I want to put another Calypso Coral one there. And over here, let's see. I'm actually going to be covering this up, but just to be on the safe side, I think I'm going to pretend like there's a flower there. I'm going to put some leaves right here. 
I put a leaf there and just in case my other flower doesn't cover it up completely. But that should be plenty for that. And I wanted to make this look more like a painting. So I'll show you how to do that here in a little, in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and put this over to the side. Now I'm going to grab the little greeting uh, piece I'm going to be using. This one is a, uh, let's see here, a two and a half by three and a quarter. And I'm going to use my um, Mossy Meadow. So get this inked up. I'm going to stamp it over towards the right. Hold that down. That looks good. Let's grab a piece of um, basic white. This one is a five and a half by two and a half. So the two, the flowers I'm going to die cut are what I'm going to do with this piece. So I'm going to stamp my rose over here. Hold that down for a few seconds. Grab my mossy meadow. And just put it, I'm going to kind of put it in an angle this way, but away from it because I'm going to be die cutting that. And then I'm going to be die cutting um, uh, the berry, let me grab this, this berry die twice out of this side. So that's all the stamping there. And we're not going to do any stamping on the inside. So we are all done stamping. So let's get that die cutting machine out. Okay, let's get this set up for die cutting. So we need platform number one, the die plate number two, and a standard cutting plate number three. Let's grab this here, and we will put the rose flower here. And the, I just look for this flat area here, and there's a flat area right here. There are actually kind of two flat areas, but the flattest one is on top, so let's go ahead and do that. And that lines it up perfectly. So whenever you do dyes that it's a little hard to see, just find a spot that's a little different from the rest, and then you should be able to line it up a little easier. I'm going to put two on there just to be on the safe side. Let's go ahead and put this one on the leaf. This one, very easy to line up. <laughs> the leaves only go one direction. And I think one's going to be enough for that. And then we'll grab this one. And I'm not going to worry about tape here because I'm not wanting, if it moves a little bit, it's no big deal, just as long as it stays on the paper. We will run this through. And then I'm going to need one more of the berry. So you don't have to sit here and wait since I've already got the, well, let's go ahead and take these off. I don't want to take a chance of them moving and messing up, but there's the lee there are the leaves. I love the um, distinctive stamp or distinctive stamps is what this is. I love how you stamp it once and you get all that detail. See how there's light areas and dark areas. Very cool. And then we're going to do one more of the berries and we will be done die cutting. But don't put this away yet because we're going to do some embossing. So we need to get this set up for embossing. Let me get this out. There we go. So those die cut really easy. Okay, now we're going to be doing some embossing. So let's get this set up for embossing. We'll take all of these plates away. All we need is this uh, standard one at the bottom. Then you need to grab the painted texture embossing folder and this... Uh, rectangle that we stamped a little bit ago. You can put this in any which way you want because the painting texture is going every which way. Whenever you put a folder into the machine, you need to make sure you um, have the fold go in first. It protects your folder that way. And this is the specialty plate that also comes with our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So I love how we get all the plates that we need to use all the embossing folders and the dies that we sell. Isn't that cool? It makes it look like we've got a painting, doesn't it? It looks like it was done on, um, oh, a canvas and has little brush strokes. So we are all done with the die cutting machine. Let's finish up the card. Okay, let's go ahead and get the card base out. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of polished pink. I'm going to grab my bone folder. We're going to fold this in half, line up those corners, and that will make it so you get a nice, get it folded uh, right in the middle when you line up those corners. And it's easier to line up those corners than all the sides. Less things to look at. So you want the fold on top. Want to grab a piece of uh, basic white. This is five and a quarter by four. And we're going to grab a piece of that Awash and Beauty Designer Series paper. And it is a two by four inch piece. I'm going to bring in my snail. And we are going to put this on the uh, left side of the white piece. So let's go ahead and 
do it this way. I can see what I'm doing a little better when I do it this way. I'm just lining the edges up with the edges of the DSP with the edges of the white paper. Then I'm going to grab a piece of polished pink open weave ribbon. This is a six inch piece. I'm going to put a little bit of snail here on each end. I think I got some on there. Yeah. Okay. We will wrap this over here. Now what I'm going to do, you can see through the middle part, but not the edges. So I'm going to have make sure that I don't see any of the DSP in that open weave part. So see right there. Now you can see it. So if you like that look, go that way. But I wanted mine to just overlap so the DSP is underneath the thick part of the ribbon. So I just want the white cardstock to show through. Like I said, if you like that look with the DSP, go for it because it looks pretty both ways. Okay, now that we have the ribbon on here, we'll bring our card base back. And we will just put this right in the middle of the card base. Okay. And now I'm going to grab this piece here and a piece of um, polished pink. This is a four and an eighth by two and three quarter. And we'll just put this right in the middle, like so. Get our adhesive on there. That'll go right there. Okay. Now I want, I'm going to be putting these flowers over here in the left corner. So I want to make sure that this flower stays over here, okay? So that's why I'm, it didn't matter if I didn't have a lot there, but I put that leaf there just in case it didn't cover it up. It is covering up, so we're good. So we will take this, and we're going to put dimensionals on it. And I think I'm going to put one. Oh, got a little glue on me. There we go. Put one on each corner, and then one in the middle to support the middle. Oops, I ended up picking up two at the same time. There we go. And one right in the middle. Push those down so we know they're attached good. I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool and scoop all the paper backings off. Throw those in my little dish. And this is going to go right in the center of the card. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now the flower, I'm going to lay it here the way I like it. Oops, I did that upside down. We are going to switch this up. Hopefully I won't tear my cardstock. If I did, I will just make sure it goes right where I had it. Now you get to see what I do when I mess up. Just be very careful. I think that stamp and dimensional is going to actually stay on the card. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on these dimensionals real quick to make sure I didn't remove too much. And I'll put a little bit right on this one. We are going to turn that over the way I want it. Cover up anything I might have torn, which I didn't do too much. And we will put this on there. There we go. Now we can put this card together. So now I will lay this. That was just too much pink rose over there on the left. Okay, so we're going to put this right here. And let's go ahead and put Actually, I'm going to grab my leaves. Let's grab the leaves. Now I know what side. I like the leaves over here. And I kind of like them in that flat area right there. So I'm going to keep my finger here, turn this over. And here's the flat area I still had. I'm going to put a couple little strips of my adhesive right here. And then I can just attach that leaf where I want it. And then it's just going to go on like so. Now there is a leaf that's hanging over a little bit. So I'm going to grab another Stampin' Dimensional. Turn this over, keep my finger on the leaf that I want to put the dimensional on. Remove that paper backing. And we'll put it right here. Gonna angle it the way I like it. I'm not going to push it down yet. I'm going to lay it down, see if I like that. That looks pretty good. So go ahead and push this down. Now I've got these little guys here. Now, I've made it to where I don't have a lot of adhesive on the edges, so I can lift this up just a little bit. And I'm going to be putting this right under here. Okay, so I'm going to grab my multi-purpose glue and my silicone mat. It's just a little bit easier, I think, to have the silicone mat in case I get a little too much glue on this. And sometimes this one that I've got here by my video stuff likes to come out too much. 
I'm gonna smear it a little bit. That looks pretty good. If it were too much, I could dab a little bit on the silicone mat and take it off later once it dries. Now put this under here. Push it down, hold it down. I've got it where I want it. Okay. This one's going to lift up a little bit since I only have adhesive in the center. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to put on a couple of the little ones down here at the bottom, this little area here. Because I liked this being able to move a little bit. It just makes it look a little more real, like real flowers. And then we're going to put this right here, lift that up just a little bit. There we go. Push that down, hold that where the glue is. And now we've got those on. If you're worried about any popping up, you can always just pop a little glue right here. But I think that's really good. I, th I feel like they're going to stay on. Now, I have one more thing to put on the front. And then we're going to put some bling on. So we're going to bring this in. Now, the reason I had you uh, put it on the right side is because we're going to take this end and just cut it at an angle like this with your paper snips. I just want to have a little bit of a different angle there and not just a regular banner too. So this is going to go over here. So the straight edge, since this, this part is uh, up on dimensionals, we want to put a dimensional under here on the straight edge. Okay, so we'll grab another Stampin' Dimensional. Put it right here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of my seal right here. Take the paper backing off. And then I'm going to have it go right here, lining up the right edge of the greeting with the right edge of the white base down here. There we go. And we have that done, but we need to put some bling on there. So we will grab, take your pick tool. I'm going to be using the polished pink ones. This is the, the these are the 2021 to 23 in color opal rounds. So we've got the pale papaya, the fresh freesia, polished pink, soft succulent, and evening evergreen. But since the only color I'm using is polished pink, that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to grab a big one here, and let's put it right here. We'll grab a small one. I think I'm going to put that right here. And let's go ahead and grab a big one. That way I keep even ones on here if I can get a hold of this. Oh, I need a little more putty coming out. Maybe take the old off first. It's getting kind of dry. If that ever happens, you just pull it off. There we go. And let's see. You know what? I think I'm going to put it right here. I want a little bit on the DSP. So now we've got the front done. We just need to uh, do the inside. I always decorate the insides of my cards. So, But this time, I'm not going to stamp. I know, a lot of times, I'll stamp. This time, I'm going to take a piece of uh, basic white. This five and a quarter by four again. And a piece of that Awash and Beauty DSP. This is a five and a quarter by three quarter. Just put a little seal on here. Put this across the bottom. And I'm going to have a little white show underneath. I like that look better. You could go all the way to the edge if you want to. But I just like that little bit of white right there. And then we can put this on the inside of the card. I just always think doing the inside of the card finishes it off. So put this on the inside, and we are done with the card. So um, we're done with the card, but we do still almost get, got ready to end the video, but I forgot we've got one more project to do, don't we? So let's uh, get set up for that. Okay, with our little pillow box that we're going to ma be making, I'm not using any stamps, and this is the only die set that we're using. So what you need, you need the big die here, and you also need this one right here. And that is actually everything that we need to make this. So let's go ahead and get our die cutting machine out. Okay, let's get ready for die cutting. So put the platform number one down, the base plate, and a standard cutting plate. Let's grab a piece of polished pink. This is a four and a half by six inch piece. Put that right here. And this will just fit. So if you're a little nervous about it moving, you could make the piece just a little bit bigger, but I'm trying to save on cardstock. Put this uh, standard cutting plate on top, and we'll run it through. Okay. And here is the piece all cut out. So we'll put this over to the side. Now I want you to grab, let's get this all back over here, because we're going to grab a piece of the um, Awash and Beauty DSP. This is a 4 by 2 inch piece. And I'm going to be putting, I just want to cut this top part right here. 
So we will put this right here. I'm going to line the bottom of it up right here, just a little bit over this. There is a score line here, and I kind of want that score line in there. I'm also going to try to pick some flowers that I like in here. So I made it a little bit bigger than I needed to, but I'm going to get some of those polished pink ones in there. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to put some tape on here because I don't want the um, paper to move on me. We're going to grab another standard cutting plate and run it through. Okay. And we'll take the tape off. And you could use your paper trimmer, but I'm just going to use my scissors so I don't have to get it out. But I see the score line right along here because I don't want that on there. I want that little section. So I'm just going to cut right along that score line. This is going to make it so it fits perfectly onto my pillow box die cut. So we'll put this over to the side. Actually, we are going to do, let's move the die cutting machine out of the way for just a minute. And we'll get this glued on quick. I'm actually going to use my multi-purpose glue because I think it's a little easier to be able to move it a little bit while it's still wet. So I'm going to make sure I put it just a little bit. Actually covering this top section up, especially right there at that score line. Because I don't want that coming up. And then, but I'm using a very light touch. Those are the real thin lines that I just put down. Then I'm going to put this right on here lining up all the curves to it because I want my flap to have some DSP and not just be pink. Okay, so now we've got that on there. Let's bring the die cutting machine back in. Get it in the screen here. Get all set up for die cutting again. And I'm going to grab that little die that had the little holes in it. And we are going to put this right underneath. You're going to line those curves up right underneath the um, oh, seams. It looks Because it uh, die cuts little seams when you do the uh, pillow box. Just kind of line it up to where it looks pretty good. Centered pretty good. I'm definitely going to put tape on here on both ends. I don't want one end to move on me. And then we'll run this through like so. And that should give us a hole this back. I'm going to be a little easier with this. Oh, I forgot to tell you, in case you haven't watched my videos before, this is post-it tape. Found it on um, Amazon, but I'm sure you can find it in an office supply store too. But now we've gone through both of the designer series paper and the cardstock. Now, when we do this, we are going to be, um, let's go ahead, get this out of the way again. We're going to put some holes in here so we can tie it shut with ribbon. Okay, so let's go ahead and burnish all of the score lines here. These kind of go in, they're kind of curved, so just be real careful and just kind of pat them down. I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of them. You might have to put your finger underneath here to support it a little bit. That way you d uh, definitely fold on the score line. Use both your hand, thumbs and your fingers on both hands and that'll get that to uh, fold quite nicely. Got one more here. And now once they are all burnished, I'm going to bring this together. The flap is the front. So I want this is going to be the front of my pillow box. So I actually want to tuck the back ones where the, my little flap is underneath because that makes it so they come together in the back, okay? This makes it look a little better. So we've got all of these. I'm not going to glue anything yet. Wait, that one didn't want to fold. There we go. Now they're folded. Just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. Put your flap down. Actually kind of curve the flap down so it goes over. There we go because it's a little rigid. Now that I have that ready to go, let's see if I can do this standing up. I'm holding the flap right where I want it to close. I'm going to take my pencil and kind of just fill in the circle just a little bit. I, first time I did it, I did outlines, and it was hard to see. So I'm doing that so I can see the little circles there. We're going to open this back up again. Bring the die cutting machine back in one more time. 
and I'm going to line up. Oh, and it does only do the circle, so you don't have to worry about it die cutting anything else. We're going to line those pencil marks in with the dots. And once they're ready, then put your tape down. We'll run it through one more time. And we will have those uh, right where we need them so we can tie this shut. Get this tape off. And there are our dots right where we need them. So let's go ahead and get the die cutting machine out of the way and we'll finish make, putting this together. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down so the DSP is facing uh, down. You just see the inside. Kind of pop these up a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here. I think it's just a little easier to use glue because you can move it around a little bit until it's all lined up. And the first time I did this, I did glued both sides at once and later on figured I think it's going to be easier just doing one at a time. So let's see if this works better. Fold this down. That way I can look only at one of these at a time and get it lined up really good. I'm going to put my finger back here to get it all lined up and push it where it needs to go and hold it down for a few seconds just because it um, oh, needs to take hold. Okay. There we go. Boy, it's getting humid in here and it's making my cardstock mess up. So we will go ahead and my uh, office is down in the basement and I usually have a dehumidifier on, but it makes too much noise during a video. <laughs> so there we go. So now we've got this on here. We will put this down, get it all lined up. Once it's lined up, it goes together really easy. At first, it's like, oh boy, it's not going to go together. But then when it does, see, see how good that looks. Okay, so now we've got that ready to go. And like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take my finger and kind of curve this a little bit more so it can go over that um, opening a lot better. But see how the holes line up perfectly? Isn't that cool? So let's go ahead. I'm going to get the lid on here so my glue doesn't dry up. I'm going to grab a 12 inch piece of that polished pink uh, ribbon, open weave ribbon. You're going to open this up. Now you can't cut these to make a little point, but these circles are pretty uh, big. So I'm just going to put a corner of it. So you uh, thread it from underneath, from inside the pouch. There we go. And I'm going to kind of make sure it's still straight pretty much. We don't want it twisted. Okay. Then we're going to thread it through the flap like so. A lot easier to do one layer at a time. Then we can close this down, kind of even the ribbon up a little bit. I'm going to tie a single knot here. Just tie it like you do your shoes. But when I do my bows, I make it these be perpendicular to each other. And I put my a finger here in the middle where the knot is, loop this, and then wrap the top one around. I found if I make the knot, the ends perpendicular after I do my knot, the bow usually looks better. See how it kind of angled? It's angling pretty good. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to bring this down a little bit because that bow on the right side was just a little too big. And while I'm doing it, holding on to the knot and bringing this down so it angles the way I want it to. Okay. And I could have, one thing I probably could have done, we could have taken some, like that little flower and stamped all over this and polished pink and that would have given an, uh, more of a design on here. But I went ahead and just went with the, um, Oh, I don't want to say plain look, but the simple look. There we go. Okay, now that we've got the bow on there, we're going to trim the ends just a little bit so they're the same size. Actually, this one looks pretty good, but I think I'll take a little bit more off. There we go. And we've got it all done. And I forgot to put candy in here, didn't I? But I think two of those Hershey nuggets will fit perfect in this. So if you're giving this card to a friend and you want to tell her how special she is to you, you can put a couple of chocolates in there and give her the card too. So I hope you enjoyed today's card, and if you did uh, and would like to stay with me again, just click on that uh, subscribe button below and uh, 
when the bell icon pops up after you subscribe, select all. That way YouTube will notify you every time I do a video and you won't miss anything. And if you like this video, I would love to hear from you. If you comment or like the video, I just love hearing from you and uh, seeing people that have watched my videos. You're just not just numbers that pop up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And I've got some catalogs I can send out to you. Here is the annual catalog, the celebration. This goes to the end of August. Uh, if you place a $50 order or a $100 order before shipping and tax, you can pick something out of here for free. And there are also some products out of the annual catalog that have been added this month. And what you can do, just click on that celebration link I've got below in the video description. You can find out all the ways you can get free stuff during celebration, like joining my team and always getting discount. I love getting a discount on all of my supplies. A lot of fun, and I also get to get things early, too. And then we've also got the mini catalog. So just click that contact me link below and uh, give me your mailing address. And I'll get these mailed out to you, your first set mailed out to you right away. Well, here are the projects again. I hope you enjoyed the video and you'll come back and stamp with me again. See you later, guys. Have a great day. Bye.